Hi, I'm Mike Barsick. I'm a technical principal with South Face here in Atlanta, and um, I've been involved in the uh, energy code adoption and uh, enforcement and education effort in Georgia for the last several decades. Um, I sat down today with Ali Mithaviani, our education coordinator, and to talk about the new requirements for duct and envelope tightness testing in the 2020 Georgia Residential Energy Code. So hi, I'm Ali Mithaviani with South Face. I'm the education coordinator, and with me is a technical principal, Mike Barsik, who's here to review the blower door and duct leakage requirements for the Georgia 2020 Energy Code. Thanks, Ali. Problem. So my, my first question is, who is the intended audience for the video? Well, obviously this information is open to uh, anybody, the, the public designers, code officials, builders, contractors, subs. Uh, but I would have to say the target audience for this video is folks that are already uh, certified DET verifiers uh, that understand the current code and this is really to help them understand what the new code is. So if you already understand duct testing and blower door, this is what, this is, this is for you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, can you give us a quick overview of the 2019 requirements of Georgia? Yeah, so our current code, or I say current, the code that's been in effect in Georgia since uh, 2011 and through uh, the end of 2019 is based on the 2009 uh, IECC with uh, Georgia Supplements and Amendments. And basically, from a blower door standpoint, uh, the simple answer is single family homes need to come in at less than seven ACH 50. Uh, and I'll, I'll add that multifamily uh, is in there as an option. Uh, most low rise multifamily that's three stories and under does not typically blow a door test for code compliance. They have a visual inspection option. Yeah, and, and I guess I'll touch on this too. It comes up, this carries forward actually, this idea that uh, a renovation of an existing home does not trigger a need for a blower door test unless uh, it's a complete gut renovation. Uh, and to kind of take it to the next level, duct testing in the current code or in the, the 2011 to 2019 code, uh, in the generic code, there are four options for testing. Georgia eliminated the option of testing without the air handler. I think that's a good thing. Uh, so right now you can test at rough in and do the total leakage and it's 6%. You can test at final with uh, uh, the total leakage and you're gonna get 12%. And you can also do what's called leakage to outside testing uh, and it's 8%. That leakage outside test goes away in the new code. Gotcha. And I see that duct, duct systems entirely enclosed in the thermal envelope are exempt from testing. Yes, and that carries forward into the new code as well. Uh, yeah, you know, this is a slide basically with the same content. Uh, it, the only thing that's a little different is it shows the acronyms that we typically use and that we'll probably continue to use. Rough in total, which is testing the duct's total leakage at the rough in stage of construction, and post construction total, that's testing the total leakage of the ducts at final. Um, those are going to carry forward. Post construction leakage to outside, as I, as I mentioned, that test goes away in the future code. So currently, this is how testing compliance certificates look um, based on the 2019 Georgia Energy Code. I imagine that this is going to change somewhat. Yeah, um, content, it's mostly the same, but the, de the look is definitely going to change to a new version of the Georgia 2020 Energy Code, and that certificate is in the appendix of the supplements and meds. We'll look at that a little bit later. So, Mike, I presume that testing is still required, but the thresholds get harder in the 2020 code? You are correct. Uh, the thresholds do get harder for both ducts and blower door testing, but, the, but I will caveat that by saying not as strict as they would be had we not amended the original code. So the, the, there are dropping, and you'll see those new thresholds. Um, uh, as we mentioned, I think it's, it's dropping to five ACH 50 for single family and 6% uh, for duct leakage. And I'm guessing it's still a mandatory requirement that all ducts in Georgia must be sealed with mastic or mastic tape. We love mastic and mastic tape and that is still the only acceptable sealant that can be used and of course the mastic is two millimeters thick, the thickness of a nickel. Um, what's also nice is we have uh, 
<coughs> some nice graphics to help further illustrate where to air seal on a duct system. And these are in the Appendix RA, which has some enhanced graphics in it for, for a lot of things. Um, in particular, I wanted to point out the, the very important detail of air sealing where the boot penetrates either the subfloor or the uh, uh, sealing, as you can see in this photo, and there's a, a picture of a guy sealing it. That's a really critical seal that needs to be done, and it can be done with caulk or foam or mastic or something, but that's got to be performed, and, uh, and we really want to make sure that's you know, taken into account. So if you're testing ducts at the rough-in stage, you can't do that, but that's an important air sealing de detail that needs to be done later in construction. You mentioned 6% duct leakage. Can you elaborate? Yeah, we, we say 6%. It's kind of a convenience. Um, what, what the code language is actually what it's saying is you're allowed 6 CFM of measured duct leakage at the test condition, uh, which is 25 Pascal. So you get 6 CFM for every 100 square foot of zone that is served by that duct system. And the passing results are still recorded on the certificate. That, that is correct. What about the exceptions to duct testing? Uh, really, um, this, the exceptions more or less carry forward the same ones we have in our, our, uh, our sort of older previous code uh, with one small clarification. So the first one that carries forward is written in the generic code, and that says that any ducts and air handler uh, system does not have to be tested if it's 100% inside the thermal envelope. So you can get out of the test by doing that. Ducts still have to be sealed. They just don't have to be tested. Um, the other two actually are Georgia clarifications, and uh, I think they're good. The, the second one says, if you've got an existing duct system and you mess with it, if you mess with uh, less than half of it, you're not required to make it pass the leakage test. You still, all the new work needs to be done to code, everything needs to be insulated and sealed as per code that you touch, but if you're messing with less than half, you don't have to make it pass a leakage test. Um, and if you're more than half, then obviously you will. Uh, then the last option is a very common situation where you've got an existing home and they're getting a new piece of equipment. It could be a new you know, air handler blower and heat pump or air conditioner or a furnace, but you're changing out the equipment. And, um, and this is consistent with our, our old code. Uh, you have to seal essentially what's accessible to you. So um, you, know, you pull out the old equipment, you should be able to reach inside and seal the plenum. Uh, and what we put in this code is just a limit on of how far from new work, and the answer is five feet upstream and downstream from the new equipment. And air sealing and insulation, this always tends to get a little more stringent in each version of the code. That is correct. Uh, one of the things we learned from the DOE code compliance study was the you know, critical importance and big energy savings opportunity if we really focus on installing insulation and, and air sealing details correctly. Uh, so. As in the previous code, we have an appendix with um, that's kind of a thermal bypass checklist, and that carries forward. Uh, it's, it's in the new code as well. Uh, Georgia has modified it to add a little bit more detail on a few things, and uh, importantly, add, add numbers to it, so those numbers tie into some really nice graphics. Uh, some of these graphics have been pulled forward from our uh, sort of older code, and then some of them are new, and one I think is particularly good is, is this one that shows the importance of blocking and sealing that blocking and then insulating it in a scenario where you have a, uh, you know, a, an attached garage with a conditioned floor over it. So that's a really important detail. I think picture is worth a thousand words. Okay, so after all of the mandatory air sealing is performed, uh, single family homes must pass the new blower door threshold of less than five ACH50. Yep, that's correct. Drops from less than seven to less than five. And again, it has to be performed by a certified DET verifier. Um, there's really no changes for single family other than the, the threshold. And low rise multifamily is something new. Uh, yes and no. Um, again, we already have this option of multifamily testing uh, in our you know, sort of previous old code, but not too many people do it. They opt for the visual inspection checklist. Today, the new code, the visual inspection checklist is mandatory on single family and multifamily, and so is doing a test. Uh, the basic change here, or, or new thing, is that um, the multifamily units only have to pass less than seven ACH50. 
And I, I, I think the other big thing is there's three important options that we have, and I think we should address each of these. Um, so again, option, don't have to do it. You can test every single family unit to less than seven, you're good to go. Uh, but you do have this other option for a different metric. Instead of air changes per hour at 50 pascals, you can be less than the envelope leakage ratio at 50 pascals threshold of 0.35. And so just to kind of explain it, I've got a little example here of a multifamily unit. It's pretty simple geometry. It's 20 by 30, so it's 600 square feet. It's got a 10 foot ceiling. And um, when you crunch the numbers on it, you get 755. When you put that information into the equation for ACH 50, 755 times 60 divided by the volume, which is 6,000 cubic feet, this ends up being 7.55 ACH 50. That is above the passing threshold, so this does, not, this does not pass under this metric. However, if you use the uh, leakage divided by the shell area, let's see how we do. Same blower door result, 755, only this time you divide it by the, the gross square footage of the shell, which is 600 square foot of floor, 600 square foot of ceiling, and the perimeter times 10 is 1,000 square feet of walls. So 600, 600, 1,000, that's 2,200. 755 divided by 2,200 is 0.34. And that actually comes in under the threshold, so it passes using this metric. It's optional, don't have to do it, but it gives you uh, a little more flexibility, and on small units, it might work to your favor. Um, the second option here is what we call guarded tested, testing. And this is where you've got a middle unit, say that you're blower door testing, and as you might expect, you're probably gonna measure some leakage from the two adjacent units. You are optionally allowed to put a blower door in all three units and bring everything down to minus 50 pascals, and then basically measure the CFM from the central center unit. And obviously then the leakage to the adjacent units is essentially goes to zero since the pressure drop is zero. And at this point, you're, you're probably gonna have a lower number. So it's more work, but if you got units that are hard to pass, this is in your, your tool belt as an option. And again, this is totally optional. And as long as you get um, one to pass in the middle, you're good to go. Yeah, you can absolutely pass with just one blower door and that's all you need. And that's probably what most people will do, but this is an option if you need it. And then um, finally, this, this next option is sample testing. And this is technically allowed in the 2011 code. That's correct, it is, but like I said, not too many people have used it, so I think it's worth explaining. And what I did is I found a graphic that we had done a little research on, and um, so here's 10 multifamily units, and uh, you of course have the option to blower door test every single one individually. You could do guarded testing if you want, but the batch uh, concept of sample testing says, I'm gonna create a batch of up to four uh, units in a batch. They have to be on the same floor adjacent units. And um, so I, here I would probably have a batch of unit five, four, nine, and 10. I would have another batch of units three, two, seven, and eight. And then the third batch would be units one and six. Uh, if I blower door test, for example, unit six and it passes, so does unit one. If I blow a door uh, test unit eight and it passes, so does seven, two, and three. Uh, if I blow a door test unit five and it does not pass, I have to uh, retest it. Basically, I have to seal it, fix it, retest it, and then I also have to test four, nine, and 10. So there's some incentive for me to do a good job, so hopefully I, I can minimize the additional testing required. So Mike, to summarize what you told us so far, um, single family homes must pass less than five ACH 50 and multifamily homes must pass less than seven ACH 50 with three optional approaches discussed earlier. Exactly. And again, just a reminder, uh, blower door testing on renovations is only required if it's a full or a gut renovation. Gotcha. And what we have here, this might be the new compliance certificate template um, from the appendix in the Georgia amendments. Uh, that's correct. And again, the idea is that this is going to be used consistently throughout the state from all jurisdictions. Uh, I think that's a good thing. And the bottom third is the responsibility of the DET verifier. Uh, that's, that's exactly right. Um, so just to kind of give an example, let's practice filling in the bottom third of this and we'll use a, a made up home example here. Um, so what yeah. we've got here is essentially a 1200 square foot home 
um, single family house with an eight foot ceiling and assuming the blower door is 694 CFM 50, mm -hmm. the ACH 50 is 4.3. Right, crunch the numbers, do the math, 4.3, that passes, it's less than five. So um, now you're gonna record that result. And again, this is pretty consistent. You're gonna put your name and your contact information on the certificate. Uh, you're also gonna put uh, your DET verifier ID number. This is something that every trainer should have provided if, if you've never used it. It's on your certificate, should be under your photo. Um, and just put that on there. Uh, and then the main, main thing is you're gonna record the three critical numbers from the the blower door test. Number one, what did you actually get from the blower door? That was the 694. What is the calculated condition volume? That was 9,600 cubic feet in this example. And then what was the um, actual result? And this was 4.3 ACH50. And since it's less than five, and we can pass only, it. You only record this if it passes. Exactly. So since it is less than five, we can write it down and, and drive on. Don't write it down if, it, if it's not a passing result. And if the post-construction total duct leakage was measured at final to be 58 CFM 25, okay. the percent duct leakage for a 1,200 square foot zone is 4.8%. Yeah, and again, the math is take the measured leakage with, that you got during your duct test, divide it by the zone square footage that it's be served by it, that duct system, and then multiply it by 100. And again, we call it a percent. Uh, but it's, it's, it's really technically 4.8 CFM per 100 square foot of that zone. Okay, and at this point, we basically just need to fill in the numbers. Um, where is that duct system located? It's located in the attic in this example. Uh, what was the measured leakage? The measured leakage was 58 CFM, uh, CFM 25. What was the area of the zone that it served? That in this case was the whole house. It's 1,200 square feet. Uh, what is the percent duct leakage or, you know, crunch the numbers up. It's 4.8%, which is less than six, so we can write it down. And then finally, which test did we do? Did we test this at rough in or did we test this at final? And this was tested at final, so we, post construction total leakage. So, Mike, any uh, real changes to this? Uh, no, no real changes of who can do this. Uh, we have, um, we continue to recognize folks that kind of have this credential already, such as uh, ResNet certified home energy raters or Building Performance Institute building analysts. Uh, and, you know, basically most people probably in the state have taken a, uh, a DET verifier course and that class will continue on and it's the same content of what we've seen in the past. Uh, obviously with uh, the future, we'll be updating that curriculum to reflect the, the current code. So, Mike, one last question. Uh, how does whole house ventilation apply? Well, this is a, a, a much bigger topic here, but um, I'll try to summarize it quickly by saying under the previous current code in Georgia up to 2019, the energy code says you must pass a blower door test of less than seven, whereas the IRC says if you do a blower door test and you're less than five, you must have whole house mechanical ventilation system. Um, what changes in the future code is the less than seven drops to less than five for energy code, but the IRC committee in Georgia reduced the requirement for ventilation to less than three. So we basically just shifted from seven and five to five and three. So all the slides and training resources from this video um, are available on our website, southbase.org, um, all downloadable for free as are the information from the trainings, the slide from all the full day training and so on. Um, and, and I guess that since we're on this topic, if you'd like more information about how to actually do a blower door test or how to do a duct leakage test, we have some good 10 minute videos that um, are on our YouTube channel. You can just search South Face Blower and it'll pop up. Um, and uh, those are great if you kind of need a refresher on how do I set this equipment up? This, that's a great place to go. Yeah. And if you have any technical questions, uh, would like any assistance, feel free to send us an email or give us a call. Thanks, Ali. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Mike.